Okay, so the last skill is, or not the last skill, there's one more skill, but it's very quick after this, is how to find the width and height of a bar on a diagram, even if they haven't given you the histogram. This is one of their absolute favourites. So what they love to do is they ask you what width and height we would draw a bar with in a drawn histogram. Um, so they might have not shown you it, and they want you to try and figure out what the other bars should be. So here's an example. It says the frequency table shows some running times that we've got over here. On a histogram for the bar for 0 to 4 seconds, it is drawn with a width of 6 centimetres and a height of 8 centimetres. Find the width and height of the bar for 4 to 6 seconds. So one of the tips you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find out the scaling for the class width to the drawn width, or maybe for the frequency density to the drawn height, or possibly just for the area to the frequency. So it's just really about keeping these bars as proportional as possible. So the first thing I'm going to have a look at is I'm going to see what I want for the width of my new bar. So for the bar that they've got, I'm actually going to draw this here. They've got a bar which has got a width of six centimetres and a height of eight centimetres. Obviously, I've not really drawn this to scale. And that means that it's got an area of 48 centimetres squared. So there's a few different things that I can spot here. First of all, the bottom is going between zero and four seconds. So the width that they have drawn says that four seconds is going to be proportional to six centimetres. And our one that we've got has got a class width between four and six. So we actually want it just to have a width of two seconds. And you can clearly see that that scaling is this side has halved. So this side is also going to half. So our bar is going to be three centimetres along the bottom. We need to figure out how tall it's going to be. Now, the other thing that I notice is that the 48 centimetres squared, the area of that bar, I know is going to be proportional to the frequency. So I can say that 48 is going to be proportional to the frequency. So that scaling factor is 48 divided by 8, which is 6. So I can now, for the bottom bit, I can say that I want my area of the bar to be the frequency, which is 9, multiplied by the scaling factor, which is six. So I want the area of the bar to be 54 centimeters squared. So I've got a rectangle. I want the area to be 54 centimeters squared. I know that the width has got to be three. So the height will have to be 18 centimeters. So I would say the width of my bar will be three centimeters and the height will be 18 centimetres. So you see what I did? I had to work out about the proportion of the width and I also worked out something to do with the proportion of the area. I personally usually um, use the class width to the drawn width and the area to the frequency. I don't tend to do it with the frequency density and the drawn height. I try and avoid anything to do with frequency density for A-level questions and think about it all in terms of area. Okay, so... Um, Let's go on to the next one. I'm going to do a couple more of these examples. And you can see how they like coming up in old exam questions. The variable x was measured to the nearest whole number. 40 observations are given in the table below. A histogram was drawn and the bar representing the 10 to 15 class has a width of 2 centimetres and a height of 5 centimetres. For the 16 to 18 class, find the width and height of the bar representing this class. Now, um, first thing is we'll spot there isn't any true class limits here because it's been rounded to the nearest whole number. So really, this is going to be going between 9.5 and 15.5. And then for the next one, between 15.5 and 18.5. Now, this one would start from 18.5, but we wouldn't actually be able to do an upper limit because it doesn't have an upper limit. So you wouldn't be able to draw the histogram for this bit because we don't even know where it finishes. That might be the kind of thing they say, why couldn't you draw a bar for the last part? So let's actually draw it. I always find drawing this can be really helpful. So for the 10 to 15 class, it has a width of two and a height of five. So a width of two and a height of five, meaning that the area is 10 centimeters squared. And that was going between 9.5 and 15.5. So the gap between 9.5 and 15.5 is 6. 
So we have now got that two centimetres is representing a class width of six. Now, our class width is going to be between 15.5 and 18.5 that we've got here, which is a class width of three, meaning we want it to be one centimetre. Clearly, you can see that if two centimetres is six, then three is going to be represented by one centimetre. So I want it to have one centimetre along the bottom. We're going to find out how big that bar needs to be. I'm not sure what size it's going to be yet. Now, we know that the area of 10 centimetres squared for this bar is representing a frequency of 15. So 10 centimetres squared is representing a frequency of 15. In other words, the area equals the frequency multiplied by k. So k is going to be 10 divided by 15, which is 2 thirds. Obviously, keep that as a fraction, not as a decimal. So we want to find out what the area is going to be for our bar. Well, it's going to be the frequency, which is 9, multiplied by the scale factor, which is 2 thirds. And 2 thirds of 9 is 6. So I want the area of the bar to be 6 centimetres squared, meaning that the height needs to clearly be 6. So the width for our bar is going to be 1 centimetre and the height is going to be six centimeters. You would not be able to do it for this bar because we don't have an upper limit. So it's not possible to do anything with like the class width. I'll do one more example like this. Maybe have a go at this one yourself and then we'll check through it together. So why don't you read this one, have a pause um, and then I'll just quickly do this one. So it says the number of hours of sunshine each day, Y for the month of July of Heathrow are summarized in the table below. We've already got the true class limits here, so I don't need to adapt any of them. A histogram was drawn to represent these data. The 8 to 11 group was represented by a bar of width 1.5 centimetres and height 8. So I always like drawing them. I just find it helps me visually think about what's going on. So I've got 8 point centimetres, eight, sorry, 8 centimetres and 1.5 centimetres. And this is representing the 8 to 11 group. Well, I'm just going to quickly jot on there the area. So clearly that area is 12 centimetres squared. And we can see that this 1.5 centimetres is corresponding to a class width of three. So 1.5 centimetres is corresponding to a class width of three hours. Well, we want our one to be the zero to five group. So I want it to be for something with five hours. Well, I guess I could figure out how wide it would be for one hour. I'm just going to do 1.5 divided by 3, so it's 0 0.5 centimetres. And then for five hours, I'll just multiply it by 5, so I've got 2.5 centimetres. So I know for our diagram, it's going to be 2.5 centimetres across. Now let's use the fact that we used at the beginning, that the area is equal to the frequency multiplied by some scaling factor. So for the one we know about, the area is 12. The frequency for the 8 to 11 group is 8. So that's 8k, meaning that k is 12 divided by 8, which is 1.5. So if I want to find out the area for our bar, I want the area to be the frequency for the 0 to 5 group, which is 12, multiplied by the scale factor, which is 1.5. And 12 multiplied by 1.5 is 18. So I want the area of this bar to be 18 centimetres squared. So to find the height of this, I'm just going to do my 18 divided by 2.5 to find out how tall it's going to be. And we get 7.2 centimetres. So they don't always give you nice numbers. Sometimes you might get something like this. So we need to make sure that we write down our answers nice and clearly. The width is 2.5 centimetres and the height here is 7.2 centimetres. OK, let's just check we've got that right. So we've got some of the stuff to do with the scaling. Um, we've got 7.2 and 2.5. OK, then there's just going to be one very quick video on forming a frequency polygon.